Well, I think the value that actuaries can bring is one, if they've got the quantitative understanding, they need to make sure they understand the mechanics, they understand the math, they understand the finance piece of it, but then bringing it and how it relates to each of the stakeholders. What does, what does ERM mean to a sales distribution person? What simple metrics can they use to say, I want to be good at sales, I want to sell good sound products, I don't want to give away stuff, anybody can sell free stuff. How do I sell sound products and how do I communicate to them, here's how you can determine your success. How do I communicate to an operations group, here's how you manage and create value for the company by whether it's controlling risks, whether it's indicating risk indicators that they may be able to see themselves and feed back into the process. Um, to the extent that actuaries are willing to see themselves as part of a team that's focused as an enterprise on risk, then they're in a unique position to kind of combine both the financial and the kind of bigger picture into the practical applications of day-to-day -day operations. The ability to survive without ERM is, is pretty much a random <laughs> shoot, and, and, and in particular if you realize ERM is not a bunch of quantitative, sophisticated analytics. It's really a philosophy that starts with how am I and my organization creating value? There's something unique about whether it's me as an individual as an organization goes into the market and says, we're here to take up a unique place. If I can't define my mission and my vision, why am I here? And most companies would say that's kind of management 101. I have a mission. Pete Drucker would say, now that you're managing, you should measure it. So to have some way to measure. I think of ERM as kind of like management 102. It's, it's saying, now let's be thoughtful about, I, I want to make sure that I understand my company before it blows up on my balance sheet. So the way of waiting and waiting and saying, oh, now it's blown up, it's too late. So risk management really came out of this, this realization that whatever reporting mechanism I use, if I wait till I report it to the shareholder, it's too late. So management's trying to say, what are my early warning indicators that help me manage my mission, understand and challenge my own core values, and are they sustainable? You know, everyone understands the idea of a, of a cash budget. You know, oh, I had to budget my, my cash. We don't really translate well and say, I ought to budget my risk. How much risk am I willing to take? The beauty of insurance is that you say, I'm willing to pay a small premium today to feel more secure about my future. And if you buy that kind of moral discipline, lots of amazing things can happen, and a lot of security can be benefited. Um, so in some ways, I sometimes feel like I may get too of a, you know, a certain missionary feel about saying risk management, but it's, we live in, 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 in uncertain, dangerous times. That's human history. And, and there actually are things that we can do to kind of help manage our, our, our exposure to that and still find ways to create value within whatever environment we might be in. Being at a company that was concerned about growth and sustaining that growth, that mindset of saying, well, what could go wrong and what's creating value and how do we make sure we're generating value while not allowing something to come out that could, dis that, could, that could damage that. I started to see that a lot of the, the skill and the value of the actuary was not only in saying where you are today, but identifying where you might be tomorrow and, where you need, and what you need to be doing today to prepare for that.